Hi, welcome to another video. So, there have been some pretty good new upgrades to Aider, and I wanted to talk about them. I also wanted to talk about a new configuration that I'm using, where I use Gemini 2.0 Flash thinking as an architect and Gemini 2.0 Flash as an editor, and it works really well. So let me tell you everything about it. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform that gives you access to more than 10 models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet, GPT-4.0, Gemini, and even image generation models like Flux and video generation models like Kling, and much more, all in one place, for a price that's even cheaper than one chat GPT membership, starting at only $11. Not just that, they have a bunch of AI tools that can help you use these models in intricate ways. They have also recently added an artifacts feature to their platform that now allows you to generate code, preview it, and share it with others using preview links, which is great. It can even run Python code and create charts. You can check them out through the link in the description and make sure to use my coupon code KING25 to get an additional 25% off these already great deals. So, let's first talk about the major new upgrades. After the last video I did, there have been three new releases. The first one after my video added a new way to use Aider in your editor. This is a new thing. So, let me explain it a bit. What this feature allows you to do is start Aider with the Watch Files flag. And what it will do is start watching your files. It will allow you to write your task as a comment in your file and just add an AI plus exclamation sign at the end of that comment. Aider will take in that task and change the file as required based on the task. You can also ask it to change a block of code by starting a comment like this and ending it where the block should end and it will just change that block. So, that's also good. You can also give it long-form instructions like this as well. So, that's also good. Apart from this, it also added support for new Amazon Bedrock Nova models. Another thing is that if it runs the test, or even the run command, it will now take in the non-zero exit codes and ask Ader to fix the issue caused automatically so, that's also good. There's also some trivial other stuff as well. Then, in the next release, it added a new copy-paste mode. The copy-paste mode is basically the Apply Clipboard Edits option that you previously had, but it is a more interactive option that allows you to basically do back-and-forth pasting between a web chat interface. It is also much more automated. So, as soon as you add a file to Aider's context, it will automatically get copied to your clipboard. Then, when you copy the response from a chat interface, it will automatically notice that as well, and you just need to hit enter to make it apply the changes. So, this could be very handy if, for some reason, you pay $200 for O1 Pro. So, you can use that to work on some hard stuff or you can also use it with the free tier of Claude and stuff like that. Another thing is that you can now just pass in your API key within the Aider command with an API key flag and the provider name, and it will set that API key as your environment variable, which means you don't need to run a separate export API key thing every time. So that's good. And you can also set some other environment variables as well, by using the set environment option. There's also some other trivial things here as well. Then, in the final release version, they made some new improvements to the watch thing. And you can now also ask questions with it by adding the AI thing with a question mark at the end. There's also now full support for Flash 2.0. It also now gives you a copy context option that allows you to copy the context of your chat based on the instructions you give. 
So, if you only ask it to copy the context without file details and stuff like that, you can do that. There's also some other stuff as well. So, those are the major upgrades. Now let me show you how all this works. So first of all, make sure that you upgrade Ader by running this command. Once that has been done, we can start using it. Let's start with the major stuff, which is the watch thing. So, what we'll need to do is open up our editor. Now here, just start Ader in the VS Code terminal with the model you want to use, and also add the watch file flag. Now this will start Ader, and it will start watching the files. So, let's try to do something. Now this is a Rust program that sorts a series of comma-separated numbers, and what I can do is just add a comment here and ask it to make it print the sorted numbers in descending order. Now we can just add AI at the end, and if we save it and wait a second, you'll see that it will automatically register that. Now it starts working on it. We'll need to wait a bit for it to finish, and it's now done. So, it did this pretty well, and that's basically how this works. This is pretty cool, because instead of adding a file to context and asking Ader to just work on that file, you can just ask it to work on this seamlessly through here. You can also ask it to just change a block of code. So, what you can do is start a comment, and then, where you think the block should end, add another one, and just ask what you want to do. Save it, and then again, it will take that into context and change it as required. So, this also works well and is super cool to use. But there's also another thing. So, if you want to have a more detailed change, you can do that as well. You can just write a comment like this with multiple lines by adding a hyphen on the next lines, and it will take that into context as well and do that. Another thing is that you can also mark multiple comments in it and save it at once, and then it can just get done with all those tasks at once, which is also great to use and see. So, that's the watch file thing. Another thing is the copy-paste mode. So, in the copy-paste mode, Whatever thing that you do will be copied to your clipboard, and you can then paste it into any chat interface. Then copy the response from there, and it will automatically apply them as required. This is a good option if you use something like O1 Pro, which is only available with a $200 subscription, or even the free tiers of Claude, and stuff like that. So, that's also super cool to use. You can also check out one of my previous videos where I have explained this feature in depth. Another thing is that you can now set API keys and environment variables via Ader by adding a flag for either API key or set environment, then giving your provider name or the environment variable name and the value, and it will do that. So. That's super good. Another thing that I want to show is how you can use Gemini 2.0 Flash along with the 2.0 Flash thinking model to get some insane results as well because I've been using it and it's really good. So, to do that, you can just create an Ader config file and just enter the main model or the architect model as Gemini 2.0 Flash thinking and the editor model as 2.0 Flash. Once it looks like this, just save it and then export your Gemini API key. Both are free on Gemini, so you can use that, and the rate limits are also good. Anyway, now once you run it, the Flash thinking model will make a plan, and the general Flash will execute it. I have been using this because both of them are free and work well. So, this is a great thing, and this will always yield better results than just Flash. I have seen at least a 20% increase in performance on my things. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below.
or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.